Hello, hello, everybody. It's 11.45 p.m. Central Time, so let's just say it's almost midnight here in the United States, rolling over into May 25th on Thursday. I've got some breaking news for everybody. Central America has been struck by a large earthquake right down at Panama going into Colombia right here at the center of the screen. Now, this is a significant size quake. It did strike, and people are reporting some damage in the area. I don't know how significant of damage it is, but just by in chat and from the reports that we're scrolling through in chat, um, people reporting that in. So I'd like to do an update on this because this is on the southern side of the area where we issued our warning. I had warned from South Mexico. I was focused on South Mexico all the way down here to Panama at the Columbia border. That was the warned area with the center of the warned area being right here at Guatemala where the deep earthquake happened many days ago. There was a deep earthquake which struck down below the area on the plate boundary which prompted me several days ago to issue the warning for Central America to be on watch for up to a seven. And I said upper six to low seven. Uh, we can jump over to my channel and just scroll back through the videos really quick here and go through the progression of warning starting here six days ago and then the second video six days ago, then two days ago. And now again in the video I just did earlier tonight, we talked about Central America not getting hit yet and we looked at all the other earthquakes around it, which I will turn on now. You can see marked in pink and red. They go in all directions, almost like a a triangle or an arrow where the big earthquake has struck in the middle of the whole what I call hot mess of earthquakes now and that is the middle the relative middle between all of the points which are moving on all sides which was the topic of my discussion in the video from just a few hours ago where I brought up the area just to the north if you look just to the north of the 6.6 .6, reported shaking felt in Jamaica now, I talked about Jamaica, Haiti, and we're going to watch this spot next as the next spot to get hit potentially in the next seven days with a large earthquake going up above 5.9. So right now, the new large earthquake, which struck, I'm going to open it up on the USGS plate boundary map. I probably should just turn off all the other earthquakes that I had open in my update. That might speed us up a little bit. We'll jump over and look at the latest earthquake map from the USGS. It also shows us the plate boundaries, which is really what I want to show you, the red lines that I always talk about in my updates. Now, we have to go back and remember that Popocatépetl volcano has been erupting significantly here in Mexico, making the news, sending ash advisories out into the Gulf of Mexico, multiple large volcanic blasts there over the past several days. But you go back to like a week and a half ago, and we had our big deep earthquake right down below this location, right where the two plate boundaries come together between the Caribbean and Cocos Plate. Now you'll notice the Cocos Plate connects to the Pacific. And the Pacific Plate, of course, has nothing across it on the USGS map. This gets us into what I have on my map here, which is the big arrow. So we have to go back in time and look at the deep earthquake and where it came from below Mexico, because the deep earthquake below Mexico was really preceded. This is almost like a Rube Goldberg or a, a domino effect that's some or leapfrog effect where we had a big deep earthquake over here first. So a big deep seven happened here first. Then our deep earthquake below Guatemala, Mexico, Central America. Then my warning for this area for a new near 7.0 quake. And that is exactly what we got. Now the spot where it struck is pretty interesting to me uh, well, to any of my viewers, actually, hold on, See, I guess I need to open up the right window, to any of my viewers, which is right here on the edge of the plate where all three intersect. All three, the Nazca plate to the south has a little peninsula or a tip that goes up and bends into Panama. So really, we have the Cocos plate, Nazca plate, Caribbean plate, and well, I guess even fourth, the South American plate, all juncture right there. And that's where the new big earthquake struck. I'm looking here, and it struck there. Look, if I'm looking here for a near 7, and it strikes on the south side of the warned area, that's the earthquake we're looking for. And it's within the 7-day time period. It's the first earthquake of this size in many, many months' time for all of Central or South America. 
So to get it down to a six-day time period, I'm very happy about that. I hope the people in the area from South Mexico down to Panama got the warning over the past six days and maybe took some precautions of taking things off shelves or were prepared for this. Now, the good news on this is this earthquake is moderately deep in its own right. I mean, it's you know, auto-generated depth uh, at 6. or I'm sorry, 10-kilometer depth right now. That's an auto-generated depth on that. I don't know if they'll refine the depth on that. They may not have the appropriate stations to triangulate and calculate depth. I, again, there's all kinds of mathematics involved. I don't even understand in getting that calculated. So this being said, a huge earthquake has struck in Central America, right where it meets into South America, right next to our warned area at the south side of, and this fulfills the forecast for the region. So check this one off the list. Check the 8.0 that just struck off the list, or 7.9, 7.7, which struck here. We warned for this, and we warned for this. That's now two of the areas being checked off the list. I moved the area in Japan, but I may regret doing that because it seems like we're just running about, what, three days late? And some of these are within the time frame of the seven-day time period. So the only thing missing now would be for Indonesia to go with an upper six. And then that would be all the areas except for Japan checked off the list. So, oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I'm omitting the other warned area down here to the south. So there's really three more areas that need to be hit. That would be Indonesia, here at Chile, and up in Alaska or Japan. All right, so we are checking them off one by one. This is not like a scorum type list where we keep track of one after the other and say, oh, we have to get all five. I'm warning each area individually, and we test each area individually, and we judge each area individually. So there it is. Now, this was said to be impossible by all professionals and everyone to know an area, a region, that's going to be hit and with the expected relative magnitude within the magnitude and within a seven-day time period. The way we're able to know is that, really, there's another force which is causing earthquakes. I want every person who's listening, even the most uh, youngest person, should be able to understand this. There is something else that's traveling through the plates which is dropping off earthquakes along the way as it passes from place to place. And it's like a flowing wave across a lake. And the wave doesn't lose much energy as it goes across the lake. So normally when you would throw a uh, rock into a lake, you would see a big ripple around the center where the kerplunk of the rock in the water happens and then it spreads out and dissipates across the distance. Well, this happens. It does dissipate, but it takes the whole planet for it to spread. Instead of just across a little body of water, we're spreading out a huge amount of energy coming up from down below, and it's coming up from below the plates, this wave of energy. And the wave of energy comes from somewhere. It comes from down below the plates, but that's coming from the core. The core of the Earth is vibrating like a bass drum. Now, there's debate on whether or not it's round or whether or not it's spinning or whatever. It's oscillating. Oscillating means back and forth, but it's also an electrical term. The core of the Earth is a giant ball of electricity, really, and it's plasma energy. Think of lightning in the sky, but a giant rotating ball of it, and it's rotating very fast. You couldn't even see it. It's rotating at the speed of light. Plasma. At the core. Now, that's not physically rotating. It's oscillating at the speed of light because we're talking electricity here, and we're talking about a plasma torch at the center of the planet, basically. Now, you can all understand what a plasma torch would do. It can melt almost any or all elements known to man. That's the electricity-generated, electrical-generated plasma torch in a factory, for instance, will use to cut through anything. But this is Mother Nature's, and it's down in the core of the Earth, and it's powered by charged particles and electricity from the sun captured at the north and south pole north and south pole basically acting like a plug in a wall positive and negative and plugging into the sun though and that electricity goes down to the center of the earth then it vibrates like a bass drum that plasma vibrates like a bass drum as it vibrates it sends up waves very low frequency electrical waves up through the magma and those electrical waves hit the underside of the plate physically. Now, those electrical charges, like lightning bolts, coming up from the core, go up into the plate. And then they spread out 
following these red lines that I've showed you during the updates. The red lines here. The electrical flow spreads up, out, and away. And it's a very low frequency wave, so it drops off earthquakes every few hundred to few thousand miles in somewhat an equal pattern across a huge area in a day, for instance, as it tra travels thousands of miles, this electrical charge going up through the plate and spreading out. Now, it's somewhat physical. It reflects. It reflects and goes around things. So there's some physical travel to this through the plate that I don't quite yet understand. No one does. This was all said to be impossible. As I found everything that I'm telling you, I was shut down, attached, everything. You wouldn't believe the story in its own right would be a great movie on what was done as I was discovering this and putting it out publicly as I was finding it. But now it's indisputable. You can see the standing wave of spaced out, same-sized earthquakes spreading out across huge distances. Hence, we get a 6.5 to 6.6 to 6.9 on one side and a 6.5 to 6.6 to 6.9 on the other and then spreading out from that way away. And by the way, that's what happened over the past several weeks on both sides of the plates. Now, I did not cover Europe in my last update because I do not want to turn on the European feed. However, I will turn on the geoscience feed from Australia and we will turn on... Hmm, boy, that's a real tough one on the BGS. I don't know if I want to turn on the Brits. They might take us down, guys. If I turn on the EMSC, they're going to get my IP and, man, I'm sunk. So let's turn on Geophone Potsdam. Let's hit refresh and see what our earthquakes look like in Europe. Now, this is just going to show us the last 20 earthquakes from Geophone Potsdam, so I don't know if this is going to help us very much. <sighs> God, I don't want to give them my IP, guys. Whether I'm on a VPN or whether I'm on my own personal connection, as soon as I connect on to the European network, guys, somebody gets it and shuts us down. Okay, let's go down to Geoscience Australia. Sorry, Europeans. I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to have to go find some kind of other feed to check. <laughs> yeah, hey, hold on, hold on. I, I know where we can go check. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let's go open up the Volcano Discovery two-dimensional map where they're going to pull the info to Volcano Discovery and then to the sign of that yet. We also have a 4.1 down in Botswana and a few earthquakes small across Turkey. All right, this isn't helping much either, is it? Here, I thought it was going to help. So I would literally have to go pull the European feed and get shut down. I guess I'll do it. We're going to dive in for the... We're going to take a hit for the whole world here just to show you the quakes. When they explode my computer and I have to go buy a new one, don't, don't feel sorry for me. This is part of my job. But I will whine about it, no doubt about it. Okay. All right, we'll check it out. Hey, take a look. We got a 4.2 over in Romania, right on the edge of the Craton. We got earthquake activity up in North Italy, and we've got activity right at the English Channel. So I'm not surprised to hear that at Leicester, we have uh, reported shaking because a 3.0 struck right in the middle of the English Channel where I issued my warning for last week. By the way, in case you didn't know, we issued a warning for the English Channel last week. I didn't mention the coast of Normandy. I said the English Channel and my people at Holland. Holland is right here where the arrow is pointing out into the North Sea. So it struck literally on the coast of Normandy in France. A new three. Also a new near three struck out at Iceland and a new little outbreak taking place down in South Spain as the flow is going back down to the Canary Islands, it looks like. And again, this is the first time I've looked at this in the last week, so I'm kind of surprised to see it all on the screen at once. Check off the English Channel. Check off Gibraltar. I didn't mention the Canary Islands in my last update or my update before that, but I've told my viewers in the past, whenever we start moving here down at Morocco, we watch down at the Canaries. The flow gets directed down to the Canaries instead of out to the Azores like normal. And let me show you what I'm talking about here on the USGS map. The Azores are out here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean where the T intersection is of the plate boundaries. And then we can just follow the plate boundary back over to Europe. And there's Gibraltar, Morocco, of course, going across North Africa. And we make that J-shaped bend that goes up into Italy. And we may have a W-shaped bend that goes across the South Mediterranean. The earthquakes flow from over here 
to over here, the wave, and it drops off the quakes along the way. So let's go take a look and see what's dropped off along the way. Well, I'll be darn, look, 4.4, 4.1, 4.5. Now, if you take this 4.4 plus this 4.1, it equals 4.5. Each four you add on, you take it up by another point. In other words, if we add on two fours, we're going to take this up to a 4.6. If we add on three fours, we're going to take it up to a 4.7. So every four we add on takes it up by a point. And so a 4.4 plus a 4.1 equals a 4.5. I have to stress that because next to it, a 4.5. Then over next to it, a combination of all of it, and we have a 4.5, a 4.4, a 4.1, and a 3 in an outbreak right back in Turkey. So the combination total of everything is flowing to the west. The wave is flowing to the west. As it flows to the west, it builds up its spots, drops off quakes, moves on to the next spot, following the red lines. So, 4.4, 4.5, then it adds up here at Turkey, breaks here in Turkey, spreads out over to the west, drops off another series of fours going up. Then we go around the outside edge of Europe, Romania, 4.2. Next stop, 4.5. Next thing should break here. It's 4.5 striking up here in Eastern Europe. Same thing's going on down to the south, 4.2 and 4.5. And I mean exactly to the point, going around Crete, heading up towards Italy. Back to the plate boundary map, going around Greece, up into Italy. 4.2 and 4.5 down here. We got a 4.2 up in Romania, due for a 4.5 next. And 4.2, 4.5, 4.2, 4.5, 4.2, 4.5. It's a wave equal to 4.2, 4.5, going from China all the way over to Italy in a day or two days. Well, I'm sorry. In this case, it's three days from China. Coming out of China, the uh, darker colored earthquake struck three days ago. So this is a huge discovery. A standing wave, a very low frequency standing wave, where it emanates out like a vibrating bass drum from the core of the earth. It comes up spreads out, drops off the quakes along the way, and average Joes can understand this. Average Joes can get their heads around this. It's like the weather. It's coming. It's like a flood. It's coming from somewhere, and it's going somewhere. Now that we understand that there's something coming from somewhere and going somewhere, and we know the general path which it takes, paths by which it spreads, we can start to plot the trajectory of the spread. And then we look for it to reflect into itself because that's what standing waves do when they get to certain spots in the tank that are too hard for the wave to go around. They just reflect back into themselves. And guess what happens when the refle reflection happens? It builds up. It increases in magnitude. It starts to go up in power. The wave increases in size, the standing wave, if it reflects into itself. Otherwise, you want it to see it spread out, go away, get absorbed. And I made a joke about energy going away because it doesn't. But it spreads out and gets absorbed into the plates, and you see it take a step down if the wave is absorbed and spread out, as opposed to reflecting into itself. When something reflects into itself, when you focus something into itself like a wave, it can focus back on itself and sound louder. That louder is an increase in amplitude. All I did there was just put my... I didn't... Well, I kind of increased my voice a little bit, but... I had my hands up to my mouth, focusing the sound wave to the microphone. Now, very low frequency, spreading out across this distance, reached all the way over and across, but it didn't go up and around. It went path of least resistance, straight across. Back to the earthquake that struck. Look at our arrows. The reason I warned up in Mexico, a deep earthquake struck up in Guatemala. Big volcanic activity started to follow after that. Now this. We're not done. This is going to go over and follow the trajectory we expect. It should go over and strike over in the Caribbean next. Should get caught up in the plate boundary here. So the wave should go over and reflect into itself. And where it reflects into itself, the middle point, like a standing wave, comes up. The peak comes up. And we're watching here on the north side for a significant size quake up to 5.9, 6.0. Similar in size to strike on the north side. So I cannot stress this enough. We're watching for the next seven days. Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, all the way over to the west. You see it, Cayman Islands. Is that the Caymans? Hold on. 
Um, I'm geographically challenged, right? Oh, no, I got it. Ah, no, maybe I'm not. Depends on what day it is. Actually, it depends on what time of, time of day it is. Let me urge you to have an earthquake plan. You know, a lot of people don't take this serious because they see it on social media or whatever. But where am I supposed to do it? I mean, I tried it on my website. It got shut down. Literally. <laughs> so... You'll hear this on social media somewhere. And what you need to do is pay attention to the flow. The arrows are on the map here to make it easy for you to see which way we're expecting the general overall bigger earthquakes and everything to flow over time. So like a river, you would you know, just generally expect this the way for this to spread. Now, the way we look for the areas to be hit next is pretty simple, but you have to be a kind of a student of this. So you have to be at least a longtime viewer that we look between our current sets of earthquakes for new outbreaks to take place that are bigger than what's on either side. So, and in this case, like just using this as an example, we have a 4.2 and a 4.5. You find the halfway point around the bend of the plate there in between the two, and something bigger than a 4.2 to 4.5, the combined total of the two, will strike in the middle next. And we look all around the plates that way, and so when you start to see a whole bunch like this, you know there's going to be something big in the middle because it's reflecting so many different times, so many different ways back into itself like a standing wave. And then you look to the middle of it like a wave would come up, and that's the next spot to break. So that's why we know the bigger earthquake areas to watch. Now, we know to watch for all of this because of the deep quakes, the ones that are raised high off the globe and easy to see here. And we have letter Ds on the map just to let people know where to watch for the deep earthquakes to take place. Forecast area points. We, we, we don't move the Ds. The Ds stay on the map. They've been on there for eight, nine years at this point, same spots. It's a repeat area where deep earthquakes come hammering up from down below. I don't know why. Could be an electrical thing with the underside of the plate. Could be a weak spot in the plate underneath. Could be many other reasons to the shape of the plate and everything like it. So we could talk about that for hours, but getting back to it, we can know areas that are going to be hit up to about seven days out based upon the deep earthquake activity that takes place. And then you say, well, what causes deep quakes? And I said the core of the earth vibrating, right? And then we get back into the solar storms that power the whole earth and, well, everything else, really, but the electrical universe. And we get to the excitement that happens in the core of the earth. And really, you have to watch the solar activity and the solar wind and the charged particles that are coming to Earth, the Earth's magnetosphere and magnetopause. You have to look at that first and watch that, and that will then tell you, okay, there's going to be new deep earthquakes. Then deep earthquakes hit. You see them raised high off the globe here, for instance, following the solar storms. And they increase the number of deep earthquakes in the size. So the Earth's core starts vibrating more and bigger and emitting more very low frequency up back out. But first, that huge amount of electrical energy comes in from the sun. And it's coming from the solar wind and charged particles that get caught in the Earth's magnetosphere. And you see that with northern lights, the northern and southern lights, the aurora borealis. Okay, all right, enough jib-jab. There's our big quake in the area where we issued the warning. I'm saving this as a separate video in its own right, updating for people in Central America and South America. We're still watching in the middle of this mess here for a similar-sized quake, something in the upper 6 to low 7 range to strike at South America coast of Chile. We're watching for an upper 6 to low 7 to strike on the left side of this mess because there's a 6 in there already. We're going to watch for this to spread over to the west, that puts Sumatra and Java, mainly Java, but right at the tip of Sumatra, Java, for up to a 6.9. Basically the same size quake that just struck across the plate on the opposite side. As for up in Japan, I've moved the area over to the east, and uh, I again, Japan got hit, but it was a 6.5, and over 200 miles off from where I warned. I warned North Japan from Hokkaido, up here to Kamchatka right here for up to a 7, and a 6.5 or 6.3 to 6.5 struck here on central Japan. So I'm calling that an earthquake forecast miss for me, and so I'm adjusting the area over to the east. I don't think we're out of this. I 
I think I got the area wrong. I uh, We'll see. We'll see. If nothing hits in Alaska, it is a true strikeout for me, and we have to figure out where the energy went. Right now, it's stuck in Japan, last place we saw it. Nothing's really progressed up out to the north except for one deep earthquake. And that's troubling me. I have to figure out where the energy's gone. It doesn't just disappear. It gets absorbed into the plates, but then we see earthquakes break out as it gets absorbed into the plates. So where is it? Right. I mean, it could be building tension-wise into a larger quake, but then I'd be off on magnitude because I'm looking for up to 7. And if anything bigger than that hits, that's me getting it wrong on magnitude. Now, it's not about me. You know, I'm just trying to keep the forecasting in perspective if I get the magnitude right and location right. So anyway, it's a big deal for me to strike out in Japan. 6.5 hit. I'm looking for a 7. There it is. All right. Let's say this is a video and get this out over on YouTube. You guys... Be safe. Peace out. Word up. Much love. And I'll be back.